ربش رحلی صدری و سرلی امری واہل الفتا تم لسانی افکا کولی اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لیٹس اسٹارٹ دا بریف ایکسپلینیشن آف پارا تھری ود دا دعا دیٹ وی آر ایبل ٹو میک دا موسٹ آف دیز بلیسڈ ڈیز اینڈ نائٹس آف رمضان آمین لیٹس اسٹارٹ ود ورس نمبر ٹو ہنڈریڈ اینڈ ففٹی فور اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ سیز او یو ہو بلیو اسپینڈ آؤٹ آف واٹ وی ہیو پرووائڈیڈ یو بفور دیر کمز اے ڈے وین دیر ول بی نو بائنگ اینڈ سیلنگ nor will friendship and intercession be of any help here allah subhanahu wa taala is encouraging us to do charity as soon as possible because none of us know how much time we have left in the world the time to act and do righteous deeds is now then we come to the greatest verse of the quran verse number 255 which is the ayatul kursi it is the verse where allah subhanahu wa taala introduces himself to us it informs us about some of the most important attributes of allah subhanahu wa taala and negates some common misconceptions that people from various beliefs have about their maker here we are told that the ultimate power belongs to allah subhanahu wa taala alone here allah subhanahu wa taala gives us three examples as a glimpses of his supremacy the first example is of the debate that took place between hazrat ibrahim alaihi salam and the king regarding who possesses the power of life and death The second example is the story of a man who was resurrected after 100 years. The third story is also about Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam and the resurrection of the birds in his hands. All three stories revolve around the theme of recognizing the ultimate power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now in this surah a lot of emphasis has been given to charity. So from verse number 261 to 286 the importance of giving charity and its proper method have been discussed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes that just as he is the one who creates life and death he alone is the one who determines the expansion and the reduction of wealth we are told that the reward for those who spend in Allah's cause seeking his pleasure is multiplied by up to 700 times no king on earth can match this level of generosity right in verse number 264 allah subhanahu wa taala says o believers do not waste your charity with reminders of your generosity or hurtful words like those who donate their wealth just to show off the word sadaka is from the root letters saad dal qaf which means truthfulness so sadaka is something which is truly only for the sake of allah subhanahu wa taala and it won't be accepted if it is done without showing compassion to the recipient of that sadaka so what do you think about the charity being done today with the showing off and the photos being shared isn't it just to show other people how generous we are this topic of charity is so important that now in verse number 267 we are further giving instructions about the etiquettes of doing charity allah subhanahu wa taala says O oh, believers donate from the best of what you have earned and of what we have produced for you from the earth do not pick out worthless things for donation which you yourselves would only accept with closed eyes isn't it time to check ourselves what do i pick out to give as charity next we are taught who the most blessed recipients of the charity are and how to recognize them Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala tells us that a charity should be firstly for those people who appear well dressed and look like people of good standing but they are in need and out of their self respect and modesty they do not ask of people from verse number 275 to 283 Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala tells us the conditions that should be met for a person's wealth to be blessed just as wealth can be increased it can also be decreased Charity is the most powerful method of increasing wealth and interest is the most powerful method of destroying our wealth. It looks to us that if by doing charity our wealth is decreasing and increasing due to interest, right? But the reality is the opposite. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes interest so much that he says that if you continue this practice then beware of a war with Allah and his messenger. Now we come to the longest ayah of the Quran. Can you guess what it is about? It's about financial transactions. We are taught that whenever loans or business transactions take place, their conditions should be recorded in black and white, 
and should be attested by witnesses so that there remains no ground for misunderstanding or dispute. We have been given all the requirements of building a strong community. Today we live in an age where the written word is all the rage. Go back 1400 years where almost all the business was conducted verbally. It was then that the Quran first gave us the rules of accounting. Isn't it strange that some people still think that Quran is an outdated book? The ending verses of Surah Al-Baqarah from verse number 284 to 286 talks about the central aspect of faith. Believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his angels, his books and his messengers. Now we come to Surah Al-Imran. Surah Al-Imran was revealed in the third Hijri in Medina. Surah Al-Baqarah dealt mostly with the Bani Israel or the Jews. In Surah Al-Imran, a chart sheet against the Christians has been presented. Many virtues of Surah Al-Imran have been mentioned in Ahadith. Rasulullah said, Recite the two bright ones, Al-Baqarah and Al-Imran, for on the day of resurrection, they will come as two clouds or two shades or two flock of birds in ranks, pleading for those who recite them. Surah Al-Imran starts with describing the approach of the believer towards the message of the Quran contrasted with the response of the disbeliever. Verse number 7 tells us that the Quran has two types of verses, Muhkamat and the Mutashabihat. Muhkam verses are those which are clear and concerning matters about which there is no confusion. This applies to most of the verses of the Quran. Mutashabihat are verses which are not entirely clear. The people who have suspicion in their hearts refer to the mutashabihat because they are able to alter its meaning to match their own false interpretations. The believers have faith in them by believing that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has elected to mean through them is the truth. It is not permissible for us to dig deeper into these verses. From verses 10 to 32, the people of the book, especially the Christians, have been invited to Islam. The wise people have been described in this surah as Ulul Albab, those who have understanding, and Ulul Absar, those who have vision. These wise people have been advised to take lessons from the destruction of the mighty Pharaoh and the chiefs at the Battle of Badr. Even though in these two cases the believers were a minority, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the might of the disbelievers shouldn't intimidate the believers as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives victory to whomever he wills. In verse number 14, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned a list of things which have been made to test mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The enjoyment of worldly desires, women, children, treasures of gold and silver, fine horses, cattle and fertile land has been made appealing to people. These are the pleasures of this worldly life, but with Allah is the final destination. Now in this test, some people will go for the above mentioned things, enticed by their glamour, having no concern for the life yet to come. They prefer this short, temporary life over the eternal life. The thing to understand is that having these things is not wrong. They have been made for us by a loving God. So when we are blessed, we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our thankfulness is shown when we use our resources in ways that please Him. Use your blessings in this world in a manner that they become a means to get into Jannah. Then in verse 31, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. This ayah judges against those who claim to love Allah, yet do not follow the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to know that our Iman is not complete until we follow the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Verses 33 to 63 describe the true events of Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam and Hazrat Zakariya alayhi salam. There is proof given in these ayahs that Hazrat Isa alayhi salam was indeed a blessed prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he was not the son of God. One beautiful event to remember is the dua of Hazrat Zakariya alayhi salam. Hazrat Zakari salam, who as a guardian of Hazrat Maryam salam, when entered her chamber would find out of season fruits placed before her. He asked, O oh Maryam, from where is this coming to you? She replied, It is from Allah. Indeed, Allah provides for whomever He wills without account. After this incident, Hazrat Zakari salam, made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, My Lord, grant me from yourself a good outspring. Indeed, you are the hearer of supplications. 
so we too should make dua to allah subhanahu wa taala with the belief that nothing is impossible for him all power belongs to him alone in verses 64 to 101 we have been warned that a group from the people of the book wishes to mislead the believers they deliberately mix truth with falsehood in verses 75 the racial prejudice of the bani israel has been mentioned we are told that when they do injustice to the believers they say there is no blame upon us concerning the non jews and we see that this mentality of jews is alive even today and with this alhamdulillah we come to the end of the third para now let's go towards the question which i am going to ask myself today and the question is what percentage of my money do i spend in allah subhanahu wa taala's way inshallah we will meet again tomorrow with the next para allah hafiz